The Skydiving Beavers, A True Tale by Susan Wood. Okay. It all started when the folks of McCall, Idaho realized they had a problem, a big problem, a big beaver type problem. McCall in Idaho's woodsy backcountry was a lovely place. Trees so tall they touched the sky, crisp mountain air, and oh, that sparkling blue lake. Swimming and hiking in the summer, skiing and snowmen in the winter. Who wouldn't want to live there? People rushed to build homes and lodges on the shore, docks for their sailboats and canoes, and paved roads to get to it all. Oh, I bet I know what's going to happen. Trouble was, that lakeside land had already been claimed for decades, centuries even. Beavers had been the only ones doing the building there. Beavers feel right at home on land and in water. For protection from critters that think they make a tasty snack, beavers build dams, then hide in the deep water behind the dam. Beavers build their dams with wood they harvest by gnawing down trees, lots and lots of trees. Now the beavers had a problem too, a big problem, a big people type problem. Where the beavers once built their dams, now there were boaters and swimmers. Where the beavers once gathered wood for dams and food, now there were houses and people. And where people tried to drive their cars, now water flooded the roads because of the dams. Where the people wanted to enjoy their backyard views, now trees toppled left and right, thanks to all the gnawing. The people were muscling in on the beavers' habitat, and the beavers were trashing the people's habitat. The real turf war, oh, a real turf war. It seemed McCall just wasn't big enough for everybody. So what to do? One man, one man named Elmo Hedder had an idea. Elmo had a lot of experience with beavers, working as he did for the Idaho Department of Fish and Game. He knew just what beavers needed to live happily and peacefully wide open spaces with plenty of trees, loads of rivers and creeks, and absolutely no people around. Elmo knew of a place just like that, the Chamberlain Basin, many miles away, acre after acre of deep, dense forest, fresh mountain streams and ponds, pure wilderness, untouched by humans, a neighborhood where the beavers would feel right at home. But Elmo had a problem, a big problem, a big transportation type problem. How do you move a bunch of beavers to a place with no roads, no railway, no airport, and no bus station? Elmo thought about using horses or mules. He could round up the beavers and put them in cages, load them on the pack animals, and hoof it a few days into the wilderness. But Elmo knew that long, rough trips would make beavers mighty grumpy and that horses and mules would get spooked and ornery when loaded with unhappy beavers. No beavers, horses, and mules just don't mix. When Elmo remembered the piles of parachutes left over from World War II, which had ended just a few years before, what he had dropped, what if he dropped the beavers from a plane? Skydiving beavers? Well, why not? One of Elmo's early ideas was to put the beavers in a box made of woven willow branches. He thought that once the box parachuted to the ground, the beavers inside would gnaw their way to freedom. After more pondering, though, Elmo tossed that idea. Beavers were grade A gold star chewers. The beavers might chew their way out too soon. They might run loose in the plane, or they might pop out mid-skydive. Elmo came up with another idea. How about a box that opened automatically when it landed? Oh, that's a good idea. Elmo liked this idea and went to work on a design. He built a box out of wood with holes drilled for air, all hinged and harnessed with rope. The parachute attached to the rope. 
The weight of the beaver fill, filled box hanging from the chute would keep the rope taunt and the box closed during the beaver's dive. The rope would loosen and the box would open when the beaver landed. Okay. Elbow needed to test his nifty self-opening beaver drop box. He put together a team and did a few experiments with weights. The box opened every time. Now he needed the real thing, a beaver. Elmo corralled an old male beaver into the box. He named the beaver Geronimo. <laughs> Elmo fastened a parachute to the box. A pilot took the box up in the plane. When the plane buzzed low over Elmo's test field, the box was dropped. The chute bloomed like a buttercup, then caught the breeze. Elmo surely held his breath. The box fell as gently as a mountain snowflake landing softly on the grass. The box sprang open and Geronimo scrambled out. The parachute plan had worked. Yay! But Elmo needed to be sure that the parachute plan would work every time, not just this once. So he and his team tested again and again and again. After a while, it seemed Geronimo was growing to like all the skydiving. Each time he touched down and the box sprang open, he'd scurry out and then crawl right back in for another go. <laughs> uh, finally, Elmo and his team felt sure that the parachute plan would work to transport not just one beaver, but a whole batch of beavers. It was time to put the plan into action. So that fall, as the, beaver, as the leaves changed from green to red, the team rounded up bunches of beavers from McCall. They packed the beavers into boxes. They loaded them into the plane and they headed for the Chamberlain Basin. The pilot buzzed low over the thick forest looking for the grassy meadow the team had selected for the drop. There it was. The team readied the chutes. Three, two, one, now! The chutes whooshed open and the beavers fell from the sky. They wafted like falling leaves on the autumn wind to their new woodsy patch of paradise. And the first to hit the ground, Geronimo! With his nose leading him to water, there he and the other beavers could build a happy, peaceful home. Oh, wasn't that good? I love that. <laughs>